All right, uh, back with another video. So today I'm going to do a follow-up video on uh, that one-click fix for looping animations that I did a while back. There's uh, some common misconceptions in relation to that, and I want to try to clear that up and show you guys the proper way to actually fix these animations. Uh, that's not actually a method I ever use. Uh, add looping interpolation. I don't use that. Uh, just to let you guys know. So I went ahead and made this animation uh, so that the last frame doesn't match the first frame uh, so that you'll see what it does. And so you'll see it's just a, a flicker and I'm not sure if you can see it. I am recording at 120 frames per second. So let me just slow-mo it down so that you can see it more clearly. And there it goes. So if you have an animation for whatever reason, the last frame is messed up. There's several different uh, combinations of this. So the animation might be leading into that pose uh, and it might smoothly blend into that pose, but that last frame doesn't match the first frame, in which case it's not going to loop perfectly. So that uh, problem is going to be a little bit more in, uh, involved and I'm not going to go into that in this video uh, too much but I'll, I'll kind of hint at how you could go about fixing that but if it's just a case where you retargeted the animation and for some reason uh, the last frame of the animation the pose doesn't match perfectly and so you're getting a hiccup at the end of the animation uh, right before it loops back over then this will fix that. So the problem is, I'll just go ahead and duplicate this so that I can show you what happens. So if we use this uh, add looping interpolation button, what it's going to do is it's going to copy the pose from the first frame. It's going to add one frame and then it's going to paste that pose onto the last frame. So it's not actually a proper fix. Uh, uh, a lot of people are thinking that's just a one-click solution, and it's not. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you what happens. So you'll see that there's one extra frame here now. Instead of fra 53 frames, we now have 54 frames, and the last frame matches. Now the problem is, if the last frame didn't match, uh, if it led into a uh, totally different pose, then it's just it's still going to hiccup because you see we're going into this pose and then back into this pose and so it still doesn't match and it's going to look odd uh, and that's the reason why i was telling you that it's not a one-click solution in most cases so yeah it's uh it can be a pretty complicated uh thing to fix but I'll go ahead and uh, go into how to fix it. So I'm just going to open up this animation right here where I messed up the last frame intentionally for the purposes of this tutorial. So if you go over to edit and sequencer and you go to edit with FK control rig, uh, you won't have to use a control rig, but if you do have a control rig, then feel free to use it. Right now the modular control rig uh, that Unreal Engine uh, released, it's backward solver is broken so what that means is the backward solver is used to trans uh to transfer the animation data on onto the sequencer timeline that part is broken and so it messes up the arms uh so because of that we're going to use the edit with fk control rig uh, this one will not mess up the arms but you won't get ik uh, controls on it so uh, for this purpose, I don't actually need that. Uh, you may end up needing it. I don't know. This may take a minute to bake it to the control rig. I don't know why it's running so slow. Uh, in 5.3, I don't remember this process taking so long, uh, but it seems like it's taking longer in 5.4 for some reason. Um, maybe it's a bug or something. Maybe they're messing with something in there. 
trying to fix some stuff and it might have slowed it down. I don't know. I just don't remember it taking this long. So you can skip past this part. I'll bookmark it, timestamp it, whatever, so that you can skip past it if you don't feel like waiting. I'm not going to edit this out of the video. I don't know. I don't make enough off of these videos to uh, edit them professionally. So, it's almost done. Some people might argue that I would, I would probably make double uh, on these videos if I planned them properly and uh, professionally edited them, but I'm not really that worried about it. Anyway, so here we are. Inside of your level editor, uh, you will see that the sequencer has all these dots on it. These are uh, keyed frames. Each of these is a, is a separate pose. And so you'll see what's happening, actually. And I probably should have uh, explained this to you. But in this one right here, when we used... The add looping interpolation on it, it did match the first and last frame, but it matched it perfectly because it ignores root motion. And so what that means is if you have root motion on your animation, it means that you're moving through space rather than, than uh, moving in place. So if I force root lock, then it basically turns it into a in place animation. You see how he's not moving. But if I uh, uncheck that, he's now moving through space. And so I'm going to go ahead and cover that real quick. So in case uh, some of you don't know, uh, if you do know, you can skip this part. But let me just come over here to the third person character in the blueprint. So your characters are control. Contr well, they're moved by the capsule. Uh, whenever you're controlling your character with your input, you're actually controlling the capsule itself, not the mesh. So the mesh is a child of the capsule. So when you move the capsule, the mesh moves with it. So a lot of people for locomotion systems uh, for the longest have been using in-place animations, and they've just been uh, driving the capsule component using math. Uh, so root motion animations, in some cases, like in a montages, for example, that's the most common use case for root motion animations. Uh, the, the root motion will actually move the capsule itself rather than the player input moving the capsule. The capsule will be driven by the movement of the character in the animation. So the offset of the pelvis actually gets added to the capsule's world position. And so if, let me see, if I uncheck this, and if you play the animation like this, then what you see is actually what you'll get I'll go ahead and show you actually, well, I'll show you after this, but what will happen is without force root lock checked on a root motion animation, your capsule will stay right here, but your character will move out of it while the capsule is moving forward and rotating. And then the character will just, when it restarts, the character will just snap back and it'll do it all over again. And he'll keep leaving the capsule and coming back into the capsule. And that's why they force the root lock, because it basically tells it that we want this to be an in-place animation. If you want it to be a root motion animation, then you'll check this. But by default, if you open up your animation uh, blueprint, actually, this is the wrong one. It's this one. That's a child of the ABP Mini. So if you open up this one, uh, the animations on this graph right here, by default, they ignore root motion. You can go to your class defaults 
and you can see that it says root motion for montages only. If you wanted it to play these with their root motion, then you would say root motion from everything. But normally that's a bad idea. Uh, in almost every case, that's a bad idea. So that's the reason why this is the default. Um, also, root motion doesn't replicate well. There are some desynchronization problems when it comes to root motion, and that has to do with uh, the capsule uh, movement component, which is actually what's driving the movement of the character. So anyway, long story short, the root motion animations will, when they're played as a montage from your blueprint on the animation instance of this, uh, they will respect root motion and that will drive your character. And I'll give you an example of that before I end this, but let's just go ahead and move on. So over here, we baked this animation to an FK control rig. And now you'll see that this last frame that rides the line of which represents the end of the animation, uh, this last frame right here, this keyframe right here, uh, that's the one that's messed up on this one. Uh, on yours, uh, these frames might be leading into that, and changing this frame might cause foot sliding. Uh, just a maybe it'll just cause uh, foot sliding across one frame between this frame and this frame if the first frame doesn't match closely with the pelvis and foot positions of the second to last frame. Otherwise, if it does, uh, then you can simply copy this and you can paste it over here, but you actually don't want to do that and I'll show you why. So I'll just paste it outside of the timeline over here. So you'll see this little dot It may be hard to see because it's gray. But if I expand to this and I select my root under my anim outliner, then what I can do is I can actually delete that keyframe and then I can actually let me just uh, do this. I'm going to copy it and paste to this one right here. So I just selected that and while with this marker on that frame, I just pasted it and it just pasted it there. So the reason why I did that is because if I just copy the first frame and paste it into this one, then the root location will be one zero, uh, well, it'll be zero when it's supposed to be one zero six zero point six. And most cases, it pro you probably won't even notice that. Uh, and it's probably not really much of a problem, but I like to do that anyway because it's the proper way to do it. And so I can now just drag this frame. I deleted that last frame and I, I replaced it with this frame. Uh, or I thought I did. Did I not? Okay, maybe. Oh, okay. So this is a bug. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, this has been happening uh, in 5.4. You'll notice that the first frame isn't actually the first frame of the animation. It was the last frame. So I just uh, did all that for nothing. Okay, so uh, if you have that problem, uh, and this is why I don't do animation inside of Unreal Engine, because their animation pipeline is really bugged out right now. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you how to fix this. So you just delete the first frame. You offset, you offset this to the left one frame. And then you bring this end animation frame marker over to the end of the animation timeline. Now we're going to have to do that again because uh, I just copied the last frame, not known. And I'm going to paste that right there. And now it's the correct one. So I'm going to now select the root again. And we're going to copy that and paste it there. So actually, we didn't need to delete it. We just needed to copy the root position of the last frame and paste it to this one. And now we can delete that last frame and replace it with uh, this one. And I'm just going to grab this bar. It's a lot faster. 
and we're going to delete this. Um, okay. Be careful when you do that. Uh, click outside of it where you see this little uh, cross and then drag over it. Um, I've had it crash the engine uh, sometimes when I just try to drag uh, select over it. Like I said, their animation pipeline is really buggy, so you have to be careful. So now we've replaced that last frame and it looks fine to me. Uh, well, I'm going to say it's not perfect. So I'm going to delete this wall right here if I can. Yeah, so you guys can see. So what's happening is the pelvis actually needs to be offset more. So that's one of the problems that you have to deal with. So I'm going to select the pelvis and I'm just going to move it forward. And you notice that I enabled this right here. If you don't have that enabled, it will not save it. When you save it, it'll snap back to wherever it was because the changes will not have been applied. So you have to make sure that this auto key is uh, enabled. There's a button here, or I thought there was a button here that lets you manually key it, but maybe I'm thinking of another program. Uh, oh, so with the bone selected, you'll see these little markers right here, these diamonds, you can press those to key the frames if you want to do it manually. But I suggest just using the auto key. So anyway, that looks about right. I mean, it might be a little off, but I mean, I won't worry about it. You'll see that it did offset the root though, but I don't think it offset it more than the last one was. Yeah. So. Anyway, that's, that should be it. Uh, and I'll just save that. And this is a pretty crude demonstration, but I'll show you how to, how to, uh, how you might fix, uh, fix it. If you need to fix it over a timeline, basically what you would want to do is you would want to actually create an additive section. And I'll, I actually don't like to create my additive section short like that because it causes blending problems into the additive. So I like to start at zero and go to add section and additive. So it covers the whole thing. And because it thinks that that uh, 51 is the last frame, but it's actually 52, uh, I extend it at least one frame beyond the end of the animation. Otherwise, again, another problem will happen if you don't do that. This is why I don't like doing animation in Unreal. Uh, there's too many problems with their animation system. So if say, if say his foot came down right here and let's say it comes up right here, and I want to modify part of the animation, like right here, where his foot comes back down, then I would go to where his foot came up in the first place, and I would press this key. Oh, and this is the button I was thinking of, by the way, uh, right here, this plus, uh, this diamond with the plus sign in it. I'll press that, and that'll key that frame because any changes I make to this, if I make a change over here, it'll affect this entire timeline all the way up to this keyed frame. If I do it here, it'll affect this entire timeline up to back to this keyed frame. So what you would do is you would copy 
this and you would oops, and you would select this and then paste it and it looks like it did something funky yeah so it's because i'm adding okay so i'll show you how to do it it's different in unreal again this is another reason why i don't like doing animation in here i don't know why that's even a thing but it treats additives literally as additives so instead what you would want to do is you would want to come over here to the first to the first frame right here and you're going to want to select this and just press Control a and it'll select all of those and then i'm going to create a pose and i'm just going to call this uh, first frame And let me make this a little bit bigger. And you'll see I have 287 controls. And now I can come over here to this last frame, frame 52. And I can uh, check key because I want it to key, uh, key this when I paste it. And you can also mirror it too, by the way. And here's the mirror settings. And then I'll paste it. And so... You'll see it did offset the root, but that's okay. We can actually fix that. So, and honestly, we don't need to do this, but I'm just showing you how to do this uh, for the sake of this. And I'm just going to delete the, the keyed root frame, and you'll see it goes back to where he was. So we're no longer additively applying an offset to the root, and therefore it doesn't actually mess with where he's at in space. That's why I deleted that keyframe on the additive. And so now you would have a perfect looping animation uh, without foot sliding. So that's how you would deal with it if you needed to uh, adjust it across keyed frames. But anyway, I'm not gonna go too in depth on all of that because uh, a lot of these, uh, it's, it's going to differ from animation to animation, how you handle it, how you handle fixing it. But anyway, so I got this one and it should be looping fine now. And so I'll just go ahead and save it. And when you save it, it'll actually update it in on the animation itself. So if I open this one back up and I go to the last frame, uh, uh, you'll see, well, it looks like maybe I didn't need to offset them. I thought I did need to offset them. So maybe I didn't. Let's go ahead and play it and see what it looks like. Yeah, so see, now he's hitching. So I'll come back over here. And apparently I didn't need to offset them. So I'll just undo that. Okay, this is how we'll do it. We'll just open up this pose. We'll select controls and it'll select all those controls and then i'm going to control click on the root so that it doesn't apply it to the root and then i'm going to paste and so now he's right back to where he was supposed to be offset his pelvis that is in relation to his root so i did offset the pelvis in relation to the root right there and apparently that wasn't uh, what I was supposed to do. So there it goes. It's fixed. So that's two ways you can actually fix it. So if if you wanted, you could make a uh, pose of the first frame, and then you could just paste it onto the last frame without the root selected. Uh, if it's a root motion animation. If it's not, then just copy and paste. But anyway, it should be fixed now.
And so it looks like he kind of lag, he kind of uh, moves back a little bit. And that's the reason why I moved him up on that one. Cause I thought that, uh, I thought it was offsetting it, but apparently not. So now you'll see that we have a perfect looping animation. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. All right, uh, before I end the video, I forgot that I was supposed to show you guys what this actually looked like. So I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to show you what it looks like in the game without force root lock enabled. And so actually let me uh, make the capsule visible. That way you can see it. So you see how he's leaving the capsule and then he's coming back at the end of the animation. He'll snap back because that's where the animation starts. So if you don't force root lock, then that's what happens. Force root lock basically turns it into a, an in place animation. If you force root lock on an animation and his, you get foot sliding uh, or funny uh, foot movement, then it's because somebody didn't make the animation properly. Uh, that's the reason why it's actually pretty common uh, for people to uh, overlook that. So if I enable root motion and I play this as a, an animation montage on here, then I'm not gonna press any keys except for the F button I'm, and I'm only gonna press it once. So you see he's moving by himself. And I can look the other way and press F and he still goes in that direction because uh, that's the direction that it's uh, facing. See, it doesn't care which way I'm facing, but if I press the keys, you'll see he does move, but I don't have force root lock enabled. And you can enable both of those and you can still play, play root motion off of it even if force root lock is enabled. So force root lock is only applied whenever there's no root motion being applied, whereas root motion only gets applied uh, where specified, in this case only on montages. So I pressed F and now I'm just pressing the W key and the left and right key. And yeah, that's that's basically it. So if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.